Andy Mogul. Welcome to Q and Eric, answering your filmmaking questions since 2007. Let's get to this week's question, which comes from the Indie Mogul forums. Mitten Sony writes, Hey all, so I'm going to be making a short film soon and all the actors and crew I'm going to be working with I hardly know and have never worked with before. Any tips or recommendations to make sure everything runs smoothly, aside from the whole feeding them thing? This is a great question, but before I answer it, I want to really stress how important the food rule is to DIY filmmaking. It's really bleeping important. If you do not feed your actors and crew, especially ones that you are not paying, that are helping you out for free, the filmmaking gods will come down and smite you. Smite! Smite! Smoke! Smiting! And I'm just gonna have to sit by and watch the smiting take place because you will have broken the most cardinal filmmaking rule ever. Feed your actors. Okay. Now that that's out of the way, we can go on to answering your question, which is how to work with new people on your films, or as I like to say it, the top five tips for new directors. Number one, meet with your actors and crew ahead of time if you can. It's very important to sort of feel out each other. If you can't meet with them ahead of time, make sure you're emailing them a lot. Get on the phone if you can. The whole point is to communicate with them, make sure they know that you know what you're doing and that you got this under, under control. But if they ask, you say, I got this. Numero dos, be prepared and be organized. Do your homework as the director, your directing homework, before you get to the shoot day. What do I mean by homework? Well, there's a couple forms that can, and things you can fill out and do before the shoot that is gonna make you look better and make everything go more smoothly. One of those is a call sheet. And if you don't have one, you can download one from us. I whip this up. This is a basic version of the one that I use. And you can fill in your shot list and your actors and contact names and start time, all that good stuff right here. Check it out in the description. You could also make some storyboards, but the important thing is to be organized and not waste your crew and your actors time once they get there. So that every moment you know what's gonna come next, what needs to be happening. So you're just not sitting there being like, uh, I don't know, what should we shoot next? Maybe this scene, I don't know, Frank, I don't know. You got a friend named Frank. Who's Frank? I don't know who Frank is, Fire that's the point. Guy. And another kind of rule of thumb, the younger you look, especially if you wanna work with actors who are older or maybe a little more established, the probably more organized you should be if you want them to take you seriously. But you can do it, it's free, it just takes time. Number three, set the tone, be on time, be professional, be the leader. All these things are all about you being the leader, which is really what a director is. So if you show up late, if you show up and you're not really organized, if you show up and you're not moving quick, if you show up and you're not excited about the project, you can't expect your crew or any of your actors to be more excited, more prepared, more on time than you. You should always bring twice as much energy as anyone else on the crew. You should make them try and match you because they're certainly not gonna go that means more energy than you. Number four is take some time during the shoot, check in with your actors, make sure your actors are comfortable. You know, you want your crew to be comfortable too, but much more important than that, sadly, no, not really sadly, they're doing a hard job, is always check in with your actors and you wanna make sure that they're comfortable because really, they're the ones that are out there. They're the ones that are gonna be embarrassed. They're the ones that are Got it all hanging in the wind. I don't know what, what this is. What kind of shoots do you do? I don't, <laughs> shut up, Justin. It's how I make my money, it's not important. So, a practical example is I usually will just ask my actors in between scenes or when we're, we're switching to a new set, I'll be like, hey, how, how you doing? Need anything? Need a water? Need a soda? You're the director, take care of them. Number five, last but not least, is this is a super easy one, but it's something that they do on real film sets. And it's something that I didn't do for a long time, but it makes, I think everything go more smoothly and also makes the people I work with want to come back. Make it a big deal when your actors or your crew have wrapped for the day and especially when the day is over. And how you do that is you're like, all right, that's a wrap on Justin. Really? No, you, you, you're not, no, get back, get back here. You all have been working really hard and a lot of times in the beginning, you're working for free. 
So you want to really end it with a great note, give everyone a, a round of applause and say, thanks everyone, great shoot. You all did awesome, let's do it again. And if you do that, they might want to. If you gave them pizza and followed the other four rules. <laughs> Here's a little uh, extra bonus tip. If you're working with actors No, 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 Eric, say it, say it like, Here's an extra bonus tip. If you're working with actors, you should... What were you going to say? Oh. <sighs> so, now I'll answer that question. Don't give line reads. If your actor is any what professional or once professional or has acted before, it's rude as a director to give line reads. What is that? It's when you say, say the line like this, and then you say the actual line. That's a line read. It's rude. It's kind of insulting to the actor. Instead, say something like, can you do it more angry or funny or I think your actor would be more surprised. Uh, you want to talk about emotion, don't tell them how to do it. Don't read their lines for them. Unless they're really inexperienced and they're just your friends and you're messing around, then you, you might be able to. All right, everyone, that wraps up another episode of Q and Eric. Hope you guys like these tips. And also, mad props to Stephen J. Weller who gave a great answer to this question in the Indie Mogul forums, and super mad props to all of you guys who are keeping the comments to these videos. You're keeping them awesome, you're creating a back and forth, you're answering questions, and you know, most YouTube videos, comments, eh, first, yeah, uh, second, yeah, uh, let's just say um, they're not super constructive often. Not in our videos, not in Q and Eric. So keep it up guys, you're doing awesome. Okay, one more thing before I go. I wanted to update everyone on our subscriber drive. If you remember our first episode of Q and Eric, I put out the challenge that if we could reach 10,000 subscribers in our first month, I would give away a piece of BFX history. Justin, don't show it, it's hiding fine, back here. Fine, fine. So I realized that I needed to up the stakes and I wanted to reveal to you guys what this piece of BFX history is gonna be if we reach our goal. Drum roll. This is the original face melt skull from one of the very early BFX episodes. It's the Indiana Jones face melt, and this is it. It's got the gumball eyes. Well, only one survived. I ate one of them. Oh, I'm sure it's so hard. I was it's, hungry. Justin, no. He is definitely going to the hospital. Uh, the gross melty hair. Some lucky subscriber can have this piece of history for free if we reach the goal. Right now, we're at about 2,500 subscribers, which is awesome. But we'll only have two more weeks to get 10,000. 10,000, that's just a fraction of the 400,000 BFX, uh, I'm sorry, Indie Mogul subscribers. We just need like 2% of you Indie Mogulers to subscribe to this channel, and one of you guys is getting this. So please tell your friends, subscribe, get this thing out of my house, it's freaking me out, and we will see you next week. Also, you know, leave a comment and friend us, and um, tell us what filmmaking question you wanna know. Hmm.